Steve, Achorda Galer. Good morning, everybody. So thank you very much, first of all, for coming back, because I know it is a, it's a decision that you have to make on a Friday evening to go, oh, I have to get back in the bus or back in my car or back in my car this morning or get on the train. So we really appreciate it. And I hope it's an indication of how you've enjoyed the process um, so far and the discussions that we've had so far. Um, just to start off on, uh, just as the initial thing that I want to say, I'm very conscious we have some members of the Citizens' Assembly from Donegal, and I want to extend our condolences from the room to anybody who was affected by what happened in Creaseloch, and that we're thinking about all of those families um, all this week. Um, we had a great meeting three weeks ago, um, and thank you for bringing the process of deliberative democracy alive. The questions that we had are absolutely integral to the process, and I'm really looking forward to having similar engaged conversations and deliberations this weekend. Um, I think this is a weekend we're getting into the teeth of things, um, and hopefully by the end of this weekend as well, we'll start thinking about drafting maybe what the room might like to come out of um, this time and this process and the recommendations that might go to government in December. Um, one thing that continues to inspire me about this process is everyone's openness to change their minds as understanding improves. I'm certainly learning so much as I'm going through it. I hope you feel the same. And I really do think that this is the space for the deliberations to happen, that we're not polarizing anybody, we're not putting anybody into a space of other, that everybody at a table is getting to express their opinions, but also everyone who comes to present is getting to um, give their perspectives. Um, and we'll maintain our principles of openness, fairness, equality of voice, respect, efficiency and collegiality. And I'm looking forward to doing that uh, this weekend as well. Um, just to let you know that in our last weekend, uh, we had two hours and 20 minutes or so of presentations and about six hours of uh, discussions and Q&A. So this really is part of the process is the discussions and the deliberations. And so, and I hope that you feel that, that that's an important part of it as well. Um, the questions that we answered in the plenary session, I think were very useful. The questions that we didn't get to answer were answered by the expert advisory group and that's shared on the members website now. So some of those questions we um, have left to be asked or answered in our presentation this weekend, but others, um, have been answered already, so if you want to check those out, you can. Um, it's an important part of this process that we keep um, responding to what you want, because it's your assembly. Um, so as you all know, because you'll have seen uh, our schedule, this weekend revolves around land and our land use in Ireland and the impact that's having on biodiversity. We'll be considering agriculture, forestry and peatlands in the two days. Uh, we are delighted that we will have a very broad spectrum of opinions and voices uh, to come and, and uh, express their experiences and what the challenges that uh, they find in, in their work. And I think we'll have a, a really good discussion with that later on. Um, to follow up on one particular question, how are our speakers chosen? Um, all speakers are chosen based on including a diversity of views, keeping in line with the submissions that we're getting, and the approach that we agreed last weekend kind of governs how we're going to do things this weekend in that we'll have a high-level overview, we'll have a presentation on what are the policies and practices in right now, and then we'll have voices from the community. So that's kind of the, the, the setting or the setup that we'll have for, for this weekend. Um, in that as well, the steering group, uh, if you want to raise your hands so that we know who you are as well, again, they review the schedule um, just to make sure we're, we're all getting our homework corrected and we're not uh, forgetting anything um, in our planning as well. The submissions are hugely important. As I said, we think about it in our planning, but I already talking to people last night and this morning, I know you were engaging with the submissions as well, which is really wonderful, um, and the steering group and the secretariat, I'm oh sorry, not the steering group, the expert advisor group and the secretariat are reading every one of those that's coming in to make sure that we're incorporating as much as we can in our deliberations. So it's really important for anyone who's tuning in online that you understand the submissions are getting read. We appreciate the time that, you're, uh, that you've given to the submissions, but also we are welcoming more submissions for the rest of our work as well. And you can keep sending in submissions until the end of November. Um, I've been reading one of uh, Mancon McGann's books this week and I came across a shanacle that I think captures the idea of what we started thinking about 
in our last weekend when we had uh, Roman speak to us about considering the des our, our descendants and seven generations down the line. And this shanacle, which uh, is not familiar to me, but it, it, and I'll, I'll probably make a, a hames of it now, but forgive me if I do. Sail three wheel war, sail umra awan, sail three umra, sail on down. So that translates as the life of a whale is the lifespan of a ridge, and th oh sorry, three times the life of a whale is the lifespan of a ridge, and three times the life of a ridge is the lifespan of the world. And in that they were thinking about whales, they thought they lived for a thousand years, and so they were kind of doing the maths on it that the world must be 9,000 years long. And I just thought that it might be a nice point to begin this weekend's work in considering, well, our, answers were our ancestors were actually thinking about the generations coming after them, us. And in that, when we are doing our work and we are considering the recommendations that we will make to government, we are considering those that will come after us. So maybe we should look back and see how people in Ireland before um, thought about nature and considered the import of that. Because the land has memory, and that memory is going to be honoured by how we leave the land for the next generation. And I'm presuming that that's a theme that will come up a lot in our discussions this weekend. Um, because the land is also cultural, because it's where we make memories, and we have to kind of honour that, and how do we want to do that? I think there are questions that we might consider. So with that in mind, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Elva Johnston, who's here with us, to give a very long-term historical view of the people who lived on this island and their relationship with nature. Um, Elva is an associate professor in the School of History in UCD, and she specializes in early medieval Irish history, and she's going to give us some insights into our past relationships with nature and a short talk on Brehan Law, which came before us. So please give our first speaker of today, uh, Elva, a very warm welcome. Thank you. 